welcome to The Kids Are All Right, a weekly podcast especially for kids that's all about health, happiness and wellness. I'm Michelle and here with me are my co-pilots on this podcast, Buster and Buddy. Hey you guys, it's Buster here. Hey everyone, it's your pal Buddy. <laughs> and we're on a mission to help you all feel great and live happy. So let's get this show on the road. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. The, the kids, kids are all right. So guys, did either of you ever do any acting or, or want to be an actor? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I always wanted to be on a big superhero movie, you know, like all the Marvel heroes. <laughs> yeah, I love doing the Christmas show in school every year. It's so much fun. Well, my favourite guys are the Pantos. I just love Pantos. They are so much fun. The singing, dancing, the funny jokes and songs. And I just love all the audience interaction. It's just brilliant. <laughs> Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, more recently, I suppose, things have obviously been quite different due to COVID. And I went to Peter Pan, the first ever drive-in panto. Whoa, a drive-in panto? Yeah, well, it was different, all right. But you know what? It was great fun. Wow. And because everyone was in their own cars, instead of clapping the performance, we were all encouraged to beep our horns. It was so funny. Oh, that, that's so cool. And so, you know, that's why it's great that this week we have a well-known Irish actor joining us for our Mind Your Head show. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, exactly, Buster. And not only has he appeared in loads of films and TV series, but he's also performed in pantos for years, and he loves them just as much as we do. So are you guys ready to Mind Your Head? Oh, yeah! Gather your thoughts, think of what you do. We are now challenging you to come on down and tell us how you Mind Your Head! <laughs> So we're thrilled that an actor is joining us today and a very well-known actor. A lot of the kids listening will know him from all the pantos he's done over the years and he actually played the evil Captain Hook this year in the drive-in panto. He was brilliant. (laughs) (laughs) And don't forget, he did Dancing with the Stars too. My mom loves that show. And, and he also did the TV soap opera Fair City. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, buddy. What? That's the wrong show. Oh, <laughs> so, oh sorry. <laughs> oh, but the parents will also know him from Love Hate. Yes, he's done lots of different things. So we're thrilled to welcome Johnny Ward to the show today. Hi, Johnny. Michelle, Buster and Buddy. How are we all doing? Oh, good. Thanks. Still good. Thanks for coming on the show today, Johnny. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. It's an absolute privilege. Brilliant. So I have to say, I saw you at the Panto and it was the drive-in one. And um, look, how was that different for you guys? It must have been quite strange not having an audience in front of you. Do you know what it was? But it was an amazing plan B, you know, with everything that, obviously everything that went on in 2020 and all that kind of stuff. It was just excellent to get back on stage again. Now, we just thought, obviously, Panto, it's not going to happen, you know, with everything and the restrictions. And we, we just thought it was impossible to get a live audience in. So... In order for it to work, and uh, we obviously had to take safety precautions and keep our two metre distance, all of that kind of stuff, the things that everyone is probably sick and tired of hearing about. What I loved about this particular panto, um, it still gave parents and families and you know brothers and sisters that traditional sense of panto where they could still leave the house. You know, They weren't just watching it um, at home. They could still leave the house and get, like I say, that traditional Christmas feel about pantomime. So it was brilliant and it was great. And, uh, and it was a massive success and absolutely loved every single second of it. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. I have to say the atmosphere, it was, it was fantastic and, and really we're, we're so delighted just to see groups of people around us, even if they are in their cars. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Um, but you played the evil Captain Hook, but you've played a lot of hero roles in other pantos. So look, which role do you prefer playing, the goody or the baddie? I've played Peter Pan, I've played Buttons, I've played the Prince, and I have to say... I don't know what it is. I just love hearing boos more so than <laughs> cheers for me. I have no idea. That's it. That's it, Buster and Buddy. You know what I'm talking about. And there's an amazing control that you have as a body, and it's just fun. And particular with Captain Hook, um, I loved Peter Pan as, as, a, as a kid. And uh, every Sunday, we go, we wake up in the morning and we do the usual thing. We go to church or whatever, and then we get a video. And every single week, I used to get a video, which is Hook. And we used to watch it, and I just Aww. always, always yeah. wanted to play 
uh, Captain Hook. I just love the way, yeah, he's bad, but he's also a bit of an idiot as well. So uh, it was kind of based upon, it was kind of based a bit like sort of Donald Trump and uh, Lord Bardwork from uh, Shrek. And we just kind of combined it. But I didn't know, at the start, I thought, okay, he's going to be a real evil guy. And then I saw my costume, which consisted of leather leggings. And I just thought, okay, he's not that evil at all. Yeah, you kind of reminded me a bit of Jack Sparrow a bit. It was a bit like Jack Sparrow as well, the way he was dressed. Yeah, it was a kind of combination of all that. But uh, I like I say, do you know what was amazing about it? I knew all the cast from working with them before. It was just brilliant. It was just brilliant to get on stage with uh, a group of friends that I had and go to Neverland for two weeks. It really was. It was amazing. Awesome. Because I know the best things is, is when I get to do stuff with my friends too. It's so much fun. Uh, hey, Johnny, mm-hmm. Johnny, it's Buster here. And uh, I was just wondering that you've been doing pantos for so long now. Why do you love them so much? What I love about Panzos is, I suppose it just reminds me of being a child and being so... It's the only show where kids can actually really interact. They have a voice, and I love that. And you know what? Something about Panto, what I really love, is that everyone is equally involved, um, and they shout up. And I think it's just that interactive experience that I really thrive upon. And for me as a kid, it never really felt like Christmas until I went to see one of the pantomimes, and, and that's what I love about it. That sounds brilliant. Oh, do you know, I'd love to become an actor. Um, when did you start, and uh, how hard was it to become an actor? Like, to have a real, live job as an actor. Um, I think it started, it was something that my mum and dad put my two sisters in. And then it was sort of like monkey see, monkey do. We went to drama lessons. And then it went. we went on to different performing arts skills and different agencies and things like that. And the first film that I did was a film called The Boy from Mercury. And... Um, it was just a two-liner, but then I don't know what it was. We just, we, we got auditions and t- sometimes you get them, sometimes you didn't. And then mm. sometimes you get down to the last two for a part and it can be really, really disheartening because you're not always going to get every single audition you go for. And yeah, um, yeah. and sometimes it's a really, really, you know, it's a, t- a tough pill to swallow because it's it's just really difficult. And like I say, disheartening uh, all the time to stick in it. So mm. um, I think the first sort of real break um, that I got was when I was 11 and uh, it was Les Miserables and that's when I realised oh my goodness me I want to do this I don't know what it was there was something about a live audience I mean and seeing you know three and a half to four thousand people a night and just being on stage and they're all listening to have that control it was just something I really thrived upon but then again that gig finishes and then you're back to the drawing board and then I went Mm. into secondary school and it was very up down up down so it is an awful lot of pressure and I have so many friends who are a lot a lot better actors than me and they kind of have to work they have to have a plan B Um, and my plan B obviously is is teaching so when I'm not working professionally I you know give on the advice or whatever I've learned in the industry to to kids and teenagers Wow so you you, you actually teach in the town Talented Kids Performing Arts School and you feel quite passionate that it's important that kids have some sort of an an outlet, uh, some way to express themselves. For some, I suppose it's sport or cycling and for others, it's through performance like the kids that you uh, teach. Absolutely. I mean, I think it gives them an amazing platform to be themselves, you know, and sometimes they just want an escape. And what I loved, uh, particularly about, you know, being a kid and going to my uh, drama class as a teenager was it gave me an opportunity to express myself. Say if I was having a really, really bad week. Yeah. Mm, it gave mm. me an opportunity to express that emotion or to express that emotion, but through a different way. Or if I was really, really excited and kind of had to calm myself down, mm. it just gave me an opportunity to express myself. And yeah, you just, and not only that, but you're also in a room with so many people who have the same interest as you. And another thing what I do as well, I do, I work in Tanta Kids for Formula Art Skill. I also work in Dizzy Footwork Academy in Tala and then in a performing arts school called Dance LA. What we were doing, you know, at the start was like, how is this going to work? So what we did was, obviously when the restrictions came in, we had to do a plan B and we had to work via Zoom. And I'll be honest with you, the first Zoom class, oh my goodness me, it was awful. It was horrible. You could see the kids' attention spam. It just was not there. A mum and dad would be having an argument in the back <laughs> of one of the, the kids' Zoom classes. A dog would, you know, do a number two on the floor or something like that. A brother and sister would be... <laughs> Uh, uh, a brother and sister would be killing each other. So I spoke to um, Adele, who I work for, 
And I said, why don't we do an online drama competition? Why don't we get the kids to actually create something themselves? This gives them a fantastic opportunity. And we did a poetry competition and we did a, a monologue competition. You know, I pretty much said, if you're having a bad day, if you're having a bad week, use this pen and write a little story or write a poem. Yeah. At the very start, an awful lot of the kids, they just, they didn't really want to do it. A lot of them used to ask me questions saying, I just can't write. I can't write. And I said to them, you can though. And I suppose differentiates with dancing or singing. If you're in a group dance and you do a wrong step, it's obvious that you've messed up. If you're singing in a singing class or you sing a wrong note, it's obvious that you've messed up. However, if you're doing a monologue that you have written yourself or a poem or just a short statement of writing and you get behind it, nothing's wrong. Every And that's what I always say yeah. to students in my class. Yeah. Every single thing that comes out of your mouth is 100% correct. It, 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 nothing is wrong. But to, to see them, you know, start in September, writing a short passage of writing and then adding a bit more colour and then the week afterwards, there's another paragraph and then you could see them getting really, really excited by their own work. And I suppose the thing about it is the cost of it is free. It really is. And to see their imaginations, you know, widen and expand and really be so passionate and to see them getting really, really, you know, proud about it. And there was one girl in particular, actually, and she wasn't happy with her piece. Uh -huh. She just read it so, so quick. She was showing no emotion. And I said to her, do you know what? The piece of writing that you've written, she was pretty much just talking about how, you know, how holidays have been taken away, how Christmas is going to be yeah. different, all that kind of stuff, how they couldn't get out to a panto, how they couldn't get out and see their friends and all that yeah. kind of stuff on the weekend. And she wrote it and it was written with such passion. However, she just was speeding through it. Uh, there was so many metaphors in it, so many big words in it as well. So from a listener's point of view, she was rushing through it so quick. So, And I said, listen, this is actually potentially a prize winner. And I said, please do this for me. Her name was Ava. She's absolutely fantastic. And I said... When you're writing, and this is what I do as an actor with scripts, I highlight different sections. So if the sad parts, I get a blue highlighter to me. That's the sad parts. Yellow was all happy. Green will be angry. Red will be angry. I said, you need ah. to highlight those different sections and then deliver a performance. I mean, what you've done there, you've written a masterpiece, but you're just not... You're not performing it as it should be. And I think she was a tiny bit shy as well. And also, she did it. She did exactly what I asked her to do. Yeah. And she, she came first place in front of uh, in front of all of them. And it was a, a magical Amazing. performance. And, um, and I think it's extremely rewarding for me when I see the kids look at their work and then they get more confident about it. Well, also, it sounds like you were a bit of a role model, Johnny, inspiring them to really bring out the best performances in themselves. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I mean, I love it. I really do. I get... You know, so many of the kids, they're, they're just, they are phenomenal. They're fantastic. And it's something that's so easy as well. You know, it's like everyone does have that imagination. I think they just need to be in a surrounding with everyone else that's comfortable to actually express what they have going on in their minds. Mm -hmm. For sure. And it's something we've spoken to other experts actually on the show about too, about how helpful it can be to write your emotions down and actually how powerful this can be in helping you calm and sort out the things going on in your head. So it sounds like this has been quite helpful to the kids that you teach as well. Absolutely. I mean, everyone can write. And, you know, for people who are dy dyslexic, to even speak into your voice recorder on your phone or a yeah, dictaphone yeah. or something like that, and then to be able to add to it. And sometimes you don't even have to have it for people to hear. There's loads of things that I just write and it's just literally just for myself. And then to pass on that knowledge to the kids that anyone can do it. It's just extremely rewarding to, to see. Oh, wow, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it really helps me to write or draw your feelings out. It takes them out of your head and puts them onto paper. It really gives your head some peace and quiet. Not that you get any of that with Buddy around. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Buddy, you need to show everyone the comic book. Oh yeah, uh, Johnny, I, I like to draw my own little comic book sometimes, but I'm really nervous that people might laugh at me because, you know, I, I don't know if I'm that good at it. Oh, no, absolutely. That appears to say that your comic isn't absolutely phenomenal. Definitely show it. And, buddy, I'd love to see your comics. It sounds amazing. I'm a massive a massive comic book fan, a massive Batman fan. I'd love to see them. Oh, thanks, Johnny. That, that means so much. I'll definitely get some over to you. So, Johnny, I mean, we've talked about loads of different things here now today. So what do you do, I suppose, from day to day, really, or week to week, to mind your head? Well, Michelle, every morning... I wake up. I always want to be hit with some sort of task. But I suppose recently, um, I have found that just going for a quick run or just getting outside, even if it's raining, even if it's sunny, and just going for a quick... Uh, look, it doesn't have to be an hour and a half, just about half an hour. Just going for a run around the neighbourhood. But at the end, mm. when I'm completely covered in sweat <laughs> and I jump, jump into the shower, 
I just feel like the day is ahead of me and I'm I'm ready for the day and I feel so much better. I feel like I've achieved something. And so it just changes your day, it just changes your mindset. You feel like you've achieved something and it doesn't have to be, like I said, it doesn't have to be about four or five hours, just about half an hour, just running around the neighborhood yeah. and I'm completely covered in sweat. Have that shower and I just feel so much better Absolutely. about the day. I'm ready for anything then. Absolutely. Oh, and I hear you started meditation too. That's right, and I suppose the this was literally uh, March, and we were supposed to go into to big nationwide tour, and then and then when it all got taken away, that was horrible. And an actor, yeah. <clears throat> a friend of mine, she just sent me this thing on a WhatsApp, and it was a WhatsApp 21 day meditation challenge, something that I just went, I'm not doing that. That just sounds boring. That's not really for me. And for wow. 15 minutes every morning, just before I uh, or just after I got up, wake up, brush my teeth, and then. Um, sit downstairs and just listen to this 15 minute 15 minutes that's all it is and it i think it just mainly reminds you to to breathe to breathe first of all and that was one thing that i never mm. really did yeah, was yeah. just breathe properly but exactly. just those little things a reminder to breathe and you know you can go on you, you don't have to go on holidays physically to be there you can go on all these little holidays and these sort of dreams in your head and yeah, revisit it, it was an amazing opportunity to be able to do that um mentally I mean, oh, it was great so nice. yeah we've heard that from lots of experts actually that the, just even the physical thing of taking a breath and it just is so powerful to slow everything down and calm the brain so it's it's way more powerful than I think most of us really understood oh yeah for sure oh yeah that's brilliant oh, oh Johnny before you go I really want to be an actor can you give us a line from Captain Hook and me and Buddy will have a try doing it absolutely okay so I'm going to go and I'm going to say um, Peter Pan I hate him. I hate, I hate, I hate Peter Pan. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Okay, who's going to go first? Buster, Competition go on. on. Here we go, Buddy and Buster. Who's okay. going to be the best? Buster, okay, okay. off you go. I hate that Peter Pan. I hate, I hate, I hate that Peter Pan. <laughs> Very good. Okay, well done. Buddy, go. I am... Um, I hate, I hate, I hate that Peter Pan. I hate him! Yes! <laughs> oh, well me. done, guys. That was brilliant. <laughs> so who do you think was better or can you choose? What do you think? Well, I'm just very happy that uh, they never saw Buddy and Buster when I auditioned for Captain Hook, uh, but they yeah. definitely wouldn't have got yeah. that role. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks a million, Johnny, for chatting to us today. Uh, Michelle, Buddy and Buster, thank you. Thanks so much. Bye! Thanks, Hi, Johnny. Bye. so much. Bye. Bye. It's time to rewind, recap, rethink time. Yeah! We got y'all. It was so interesting to hear Johnny talk about how much a healthy routine helped him when he went through the COVID lockdowns. Lots of walks in the fresh air, being in nature, and physically active were very important in keeping him feeling healthy, happy, and well. Hey, like our catchphrase. (laughs) Well, that's kind of like our mindfulness moments we do each week in the show. Yeah, yeah. Mindfulness is a type of meditation where you take your time breathing and focusing on what you're feeling right here and right now. But I really like his challenge to write down our thoughts and our feelings as little stories or in a journal or just a sentence. Because I find writing things out really helps me to clear my head. Yeah, and make sense of the feelings that are racing around my body. We definitely learned loads of cool new tools to use, Buster. Yeah, (laughs) high five. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to rewind, recap, rethink time. Yeah. Here we go, yo. Hey guys, it's that time again. It's time to tickle your funny bone. <laughs> my name is Megan. I'm age nine and this is my joke. What's a chameleon's favorite job? Being a comedian. <laughs> what do you call a girl standing between two houses? A lane. What do you call a girl standing between a tennis court? A net. they were brilliant yeah those jokes were absolutely hilarious so we've learned loads today laugh lots and now it's time to give our brains a massage are you guys ready for this week's mini mindfulness moment yeah what's Louise got in store hi everyone hope you're all well My name's Louise and welcome to this episode of Mini Mindfulness Moments. 
So today's mini mindfulness moment is called air breathing. So to do this breathing, put one finger underneath your nose and breathe in deeply and feel the cold air as you breathe in. Move the finger to your mouth and breathe out slowly. Feel the warm air as you breathe out. Breathe in, feel the cool air. Breathe out, feel the warm air. Well done, that was so good. So looking forward to seeing you for next week's mini mindfulness moment. Bye for now. So guys, that's almost it from us. Thanks to all the kids who sent in their audio clips. And if you have a story, a question or a favourite joke, we'd love to hear from you. All you have to do is record it on the inbuilt voice recorder on an adult's phone and WhatsApp it to us. You'll find all the details on our website, www.thekidsareallright.ie <laughs> As well as loads of info on everything we talk about in our shows. Oh, and follow us on social media for loads of fun stuff and competitions. That's where me and Buddy take over. Yeah. yeah. Just look for The Kids Are All Right Podcast. Oh, and don't forget, that's all, as in... A-L-L. Yeah, nice one, Buster. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this week's show, and if so, tell all your friends about it. And remember, guys, try to be healthy, be well, and be happy. See you next time on The Kids Are All Right Podcast. Kids, it's time. Are you ready? It's time to... Air the chair in the car! Or wherever you are. <laughs> Let's rock! Ha <laughs> ha